Hey guys, welcome back to our VCP 6 or 5 ICM hands-on training. This is lab 8 into the series. In this lab, we'll go ahead and explore and, and we'll see how we can access or work with an iSCSI storage and really mount this iSCSI storage onto our ESXi host. This is the objective uh, that we plan to cover in this lab. We'll go ahead and configure and access an iSCSI. So if you know the iSCSI is just really an acronym for Internet Small Computer System Interface, it's a kind of a standard for accessing an IP-based uh, storage. So just with the help of an IP, uh, you can go ahead and access your storage and mount some of the partitions or the LUN onto your ESXi host. And later on, you can create a, your VMFS partitions or file system onto those LUNs. So we'll go ahead and explore and configure an iSCSI system and we'll walk through a different step where we'll go ahead and new VM kernel adapter. The reason for adding a new VM kernel adapter, we want to use a dedicated kernel adapter for accessing the storage. It's not a requirement. You can go ahead and make use of existing VM kernel, which is your VMK0. But in the production, you definitely want to have a dedicated uh, VM kernel because your storage could be on a different network, which may not be your management interface or the management network. So it makes perfect sense to have a dedicated VM kernel port when you're working with an IP storage. So we will go ahead and see how would you go ahead and create a new VM kernel. Uh, so with that new VM kernel, we will go ahead and access our IP storage. We'll go ahead and explore how do you really go ahead and install iSCSI software adapter on your ESXi. Then later we'll go ahead and configure the newly installed iSCSI software adapter. And then we will go ahead and connect it to our IP storage. That way we can go ahead and start seeing the LUNs or the partitions or the data volumes available on our iSCSI storage. Let's jump onto the hands-on. So I went ahead and logged in to our uh, vSphere web client. So within the vSphere web client, let's go ahead and click on host and cluster. There are three host and clusters. There are three hosts uh, within this ESXR or within this vSphere. We will go ahead and mount our iSCSI onto, uh, let's start with the host number 43. So let's go ahead and click on your host. And again, on the right hand side, just simply go ahead and click on the configure. Within the configure, we are in the networking. Under the networking, if you see, there is an option that says VM kernel adapter. So simply go ahead and click on VM kernel adapter. And right now, there is only one VM kernel adapter. The name is VMK0. If you go ahead and click on this VM kernel adapter, I'll go ahead and show you some of the details of this VM kernel adapter. The label is here, management network, and uh, some of the other things here. And if you go ahead and click on properties, it would show you a uh, few more information. If I go ahead and click on IP setting, it shows the IP setting for uh, this particular VMK. If I go ahead and click on policies, you would go ahead and see some more things. Let me just simply go ahead and click on edit here. Within the edit, you would see a couple of options. And one of the things it says a TCP IP stack is being used here as a default and the enabled services on this VMK0 is right now only the management. We will go ahead and explore some of these things later into the lab. Now just simply go ahead and click on the add host networking. And this time we will be adding a VM kernel adapter. So simply go ahead and select VM kernel network adapter. And let's run through this wizard pretty quick. So I'll go ahead and select the existing switch here. So let's go ahead and select the switch that will be working. In this case, I will be working with the vSwitch 0. Once that's done, just simply go ahead and click Next. Now, you're being asked to provide a label uh, for this particular one. So in the label, uh, let's say we are connecting to our iSCSI. So I can just simply call it our IP dash storage. Just to signify if there is a VLAN, uh, you can go ahead and select that. The IP setting, in this case, we will be using an IPv4. The TCP IP stack is default. If you are working with provisioning, you can go ahead and select provisioning as your TCP IP stack. If you are doing a vMotion, we will be seeing these things later. Right now, we'll just leave the option being selected as a default. We don't have to enable any extra services here. So just simply go ahead and click Next here. Now, there are two options uh, because if you see in the previous page, we went ahead and assigned IPv4, though there is an option for IPv6 or you can have both. So I'll be working with the IPv4. So now to assign an IPv4 to this VM kernel, uh, if there is a DHCP, it can get IP from there. But I feel it's a best practice to use static IP address when you are working with a storage. So that way, if there is any ACL or any security on your storage side, you can allow the traffic only from this particular IP address. So I'll go ahead and click use a static IP and I will go ahead and assign an IP address to my VM kernel that we will be using. And using this IP, we will be connecting to our IP storage. So let me go ahead and assign a IP address to our 
And for the VM kernel, there is a default gateway. Uh, the IP, the network I'm using is within the same as my management network. So I can leave my default gateway to be the one which is being presented. If you need to change your default gateway, you can always click on override and specify a different gateway if you need to do. But in my case, uh, this setting looks good. So I will just simply go ahead and click next here and let me go ahead and do the finish. If everything is good, we should see a new VMK being added. And here are some of the details. Again, you can go ahead and edit the settings and take a look at some of the different details like the IPv4 address that was configured. Now, let me go ahead and quickly repeat this same process for the rest of our two hosts pretty quickly. So I just went ahead and added the VMK kernel to rest of the two hosts. As you can see, I have added a VMK to host 45 and I added another VM kernel port to our host 44. So that this is the first step into accessing the ISKC storage. So we are creating a dedicated VM kernel port for accessing the our IP storage. Now let's go ahead and add the ISKC software adapter onto our ESXi host. So let's go ahead and start with any of the hosts that you like. Let me go ahead and start with host 45. We are under the configure. Under the configure, there are a couple of options. So there is a tab that says storage within the storage. Uh, there are a couple of options that says storage adapter devices. So let's go ahead and click on storage adapters. So right now, if in the storage adapters, if you take a look, we have a couple of the adapters here. So to add a new storage adapters, just simply go ahead and click on the plus icon. You are being presented with an option that says software iSCSI adapter. And right now you can see we don't have any software iSCSI adapter installed. So just simply go ahead and click on software iSCSI adapter. Now we are being presented with a dialog box that says a new software iSCSI adapter will be added to the list. After it has been added, select the adapter and use the adapter details section to complete the configuration. Yes, that's what we want. We want to go ahead and add a new software iSCSI adapter. And once that is done, the once that is added, we will go ahead and configure our newly added software iSCSI adapter. So I'll just simply go ahead and click OK here. And you should see in the recent task, it says change software iSCSI adapter and that was done. Within this list, now if I scroll down, we have an option that says iSCSI software adapter and there was adapt adapter was added. The name of that adapter is VMHPA64, the type is iSCSI. And right now the status is online. The identifier or the IQN for this one is this particular information. There are right now no targets, there are no device and there is no path because we have not configured anything onto our newly installed iSCSI software adapter. Now, if you take a look at on this iSCSI right now, the status is being enabled. If you need to disable for some reason, you can go ahead and click on disable to disable the status or disable the iSCSI software adapter. And again, if you scroll down within the further under the journal section, we have some more details that we can go ahead and configure. Under devices right now, there is no nothing is configured. Now, if we need to make any change again, you can go ahead and click on journal tab. Uh, we are okay with the iSCSI name. If you need to assign an alias, you can go ahead and do that. But in my case, I am okay with the iSCSI name. Uh, that's the only thing uh, we are looking to do on this particular page. Now, there are a couple of options here. There is a target, there it says a network binding. So now let's go ahead and click on the network port binding. So it clearly says no VM kernel uh, port adapter. So now just simply go ahead and click on plus here. And we are being asked, okay, hey, which VM kernel you want to use for the communication to your iSCSI software adapter. So in this case, I will go ahead and select IP storage. This is the VM kernel port group, or this is the VMK that we had created for accessing our IP storage. So simply go ahead and select this for the communication to our IP storage. Now just simply go ahead and click okay here. And in within a couple of seconds, you can see the network port binding was done. And now we are being presented with a message Due to recent configuration changes, a rescan of the storage adapter is recommended. So ESX is suggesting, okay, hey, there were some changes were being made. Now you want to go ahead and rescan the changes. But before we go ahead and uh, do the scan, I want to go to the targets and we want to go ahead and discover our LUNs based on some information. So there are two ways you can discover your LUNs or target, either dynamic discovery or static discovery. Dynamic discovery, as the, the tooltip says, iSCSI targets are dynamically discovered. Discovered, Or if you want to use the static, you want to go ahead and do the manual, you can go ahead and do that. In this case, we will be using the dynamic discovery. So on the dynamic discovery, just simply go ahead and click add here and you are being asked to specify the IP address or the FQDN of your iSCSI server. The port being used by iSCSI is 3260. So now let me go ahead and type in the IP address of my iSCSI server. 
And now just simply go ahead and click OK here. And you can see our new IE SCSI server was added. Right now, if I go to the paths uh, or devices, we don't have any information if I do the same thing over here. So now we have configured a network port binding as well as we have specified the targets. Now we will go ahead and scan all the network adapters for a possible change as the message kind of indicates. So for that, we can just simply go to the storage adapters and there is an option that says rescan all storage adapters on the host to discover newly added storage devices and our VMFS volumes. Now simply go ahead and click on this option and we will go ahead and scan for any kind of devices. So let's go ahead and click OK. It should be a couple seconds and right now the status remains online but if you noticed here under the target it shows there are eight targets available. So if I scroll down on the right hand side there are eight devices and there are eight paths. Now if I come back under the devices we can go ahead and verify the same thing. It says there are eight drives. Each drive is of 100 gig capacity and those are of the flash type and this is the name of my LUNs and these are the LUN ID LUN 16548 and, and so on. If I go ahead and click on the paths tab you would see these are the different paths and right now all the paths are active and these are their runtime name these are the different targets they are connected to and these are the different LUNs that we have shown or we have mounted from our IP storage basically. Now let me go ahead and repeat the same process quickly for rest of the other two ESXi hosts. I will quickly walk you through again on the 43 and 44. So let's go to the 44 under the storage, storage adapters. Go ahead and add the storage adapters. Everything looks good. Uh, once the storage adapter is added, let's go ahead and configure the storage adapters. We'll go under the properties. Everything looks good. Now we'll go under network port binding. Go ahead and select the VMK kernel port, which is VMK1 on this host as well. Now let's go ahead and configure the target, which is the IP address of our IP storage. And just simply go ahead and scan the system. While the scan is happening, let's go to 44 and repeat the same step here also. Soft rise gives the adapter. Click OK. Go ahead and configure your network binding, VM kernel 1. Go ahead and configure the targets using the dynamic discovery. Go ahead and specify all the information and go ahead and do the scan. Now let's come back to host 43 and the scan should be done. And as we can see, it shows there are eight targets and we can go ahead and confirm that going under the device tab as well as under the paths. Now let's go ahead and confirm the same thing on host 44. Even for host 44 there are 8. And let's go ahead and conf confirm the same thing one more time for 45. So uh, as you can see it's pretty easy to go ahead and access your IP store using the iSCSI software adapter which is available on your ESXi host. So for this we went ahead and created a dedicated VM kernel port. We ended up binding that network or VM kernel port with the network port binding and then we went ahead and specified the target which is the IP address of our IP storage and after that we went ahead into the scan. Now we are able to access all of the eight LUNs which are available on our IP storage. That'll be all for this episode. I will see you guys in the next lab. Thank you.